Look, guys, I'm wearing my boxer shorts. Well, I hope everyone is doing super dandy today. Because for today's video, we are going to be doing some knitting. Because I want to make a wrap sweater, specifically a mohair wrap sweater. And this has been something on my list for a while and I've been waiting till it got a bit nicer. And today is beautiful sunshine, so I thought today's the day. The pattern is from Speckle Streck. Streck? Streck? Speckle Streck? Streck? And it is called the Puff and Go Wrapper, which that's an awesome name. That's a really good name too. And the one thing I'm very excited about the sweater is that it is a one piecer, being that you start from the top, you work your way down. There's no separate pieces to sew in at the end. It's just all one piece. Also, side note before we get started, my knitting needles here. I get a lot of questions about these asking where I got them. I got them from Amazon. I'll have it linked down below. I think it's linked in all my videos. So I'm now working on my first row now. Beautiful. So unfortunately, I'm now figuring out the first step is going to take a bit. This took me an hour and a half to do, and that was like halfway, so. So my number one question I get asked is how I get the motivation to finish projects, because you guys always see in my videos me finishing projects really fast, and um, that's not really reality for me. Only when I do a video because I have to get it done because I have a deadline, but beside my couch over here, there are unfinished projects. Listen, you like the sunshine? You like the sun? So I have a funny story to tell you guys. On the weekend, it was just me at the place, it was just me and Bess in here, and I went to go use the washroom, and I like, almost shut the door the whole way, but I didn't because I was like, no one's here. But then Benson decided he wanted to come into the bathroom with me because he's always scratching on the door every time I try to use the washroom. And he came in <laughs> and then just like farted. So I don't know if I made a big mistake with this, with the color choice, just because I, I just couldn't decide in the yarn store which color to choose just because there were so many nude colors and there wasn't very many colors like this. So I decided to go basic and go for this cream, but now I'm wondering if this color is just not gonna look good on me. And do I wanna continue working on this for like 50 more hours if it's not gonna look good on me? So to figure out if this color was gonna look good on my skin, I went to the Google, I searched if this color was gonna look good on my skin, my fair skin, and this website told me it would look great. It would look amazing. So I carried on and kept working on the sweater. I ended up finishing the top back portion, this tiny little piece here. Next, I'm working on the front piece. So really, I just cast it on stitches here, and I think it just makes the front piece and then maybe we'll make the next front piece and then maybe we'll do the arm and then the other arm and then the rest of the body and then we're done. I can't snap with this hand. So that's a good snap, bad snap. But for now, I'm gonna go sit on the couch, possibly watch The Office, possibly listen to my Harry Potter books, possibly watch This Is Us, not really sure. Good morning, Benson. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> How'd you get in there? <laughs> so this morning, woke up, sat on the couch, and I worked on my sweater maybe like 30 minutes to finish the part that I didn't finish last night. But this is what she looks like now. The only thing is, I, I hate this color. I absolutely hate this color. And the more and more I knit it, 
the more and more I'm getting mad at myself that I thought this was going to be a great color for myself. I don't know why I couldn't have just chose a cream like this one and not a taupe, a light taupe. So when I finally finish this, we're going to have to hand dye it a different color. We're going to have to hand dye it a Jenna color because oh, this is going to take a long time to finish and I'm going to wear this. I'm going to wear this. So it needs to be a nice color on the end. So I don't think anybody knows this, but my absolute favorite type of pizza is pineapple pizza. Like if I'm gonna order a pizza for myself that no one else is gonna eat, and I can just, you know, pick the toppings that I love the most, I order pineapple with extra pineapple. Nothing else on it, just pineapple. Pineapple. <sighs> so now that I'm fully energized from my pineapple pizza, I am ready to knit. And this is how much I have so far. Just a little bit more than before. Got a little bit more length here. We got the arm shaped armhole. She's looking good, other than the color. But I, I said I wasn't gonna talk about that because we're gonna hand dye her. Right now, she looks like the cardigan I wore to my grade seven graduation. I finally realized why I'm enjoying this pattern so much. And it is because I do not have to count stitches or rows. And then just measure, there's my measuring tape here, how long I go for. And I feel like that's how all patterns should be. I don't, yeah, I'm not a fan of counting stitches and rows. It's my least favorite part about knitting. I think it's even more my least favorite part that it makes sense. I dislike it more than sewing seams together. Yeah, I'm just really enjoying myself because I don't have to count anything. I'm also getting close to being done this top portion and then I'll be working on the arms neck next. Also, this looks tiny, right? Like, too tiny? So last night, I was legit knitting until I couldn't knit anymore. <laughs> And I don't think I've ever gotten to that point where it was actually a really big struggle to knit. But it was worth it because I am almost done the body portion. Also, on another note, I am going on a little road trip today. Is that a landline phone? So I've been working on this ribbing for a while and unfortunately it's just going really slow. Is I'm not very fast at ribbing, especially when I get distracted, but this is what she looks like so far. And once I get to the end, however long I'm supposed to do this for, I need to do an Italian bind off, which I personally have never done before because I've never really just had the patience to try to learn it. But I think I'm gonna have to today. It sounds complicated. I heard is, is not very fun, but it looks really pretty. So this time I went to the YouTube. I looked for a tutorial for this Italian bind off thing. And actually it wasn't very difficult. I got it pretty quickly. It does take more concentration than a regular bind off, but it looks way better and it's stretchy. Is my bind off. Ta -da! Ta -da! I feel like I did it right. I think I did it right. Cause eventually after I got the hang of just like, you know, weaving, I just, I just got it. And as for the fit, I'm honestly really impressed that she does fit great because I was a little worried she was going to be too small, but the shape, just everything about it so far is perfect. So for this road trip, it's actually not a road trip because I'm just going out for the day and then coming home, but I had some errands. So before I did my errands, I had to get an acai bowl because they're my favorite. And then before that, I also had to go to a yarn store because that's my other favorite thing is to go to yarn stores and look at green yarn and most of the time buy more green yarn. And then they had some hand spun yarn there, which as soon as I saw it, I was like, yeah, I need it. But then I looked at the price and then my bank's like, no, Jenna, you don't need it. So we said bye, bye. 
And then, you know, the rest of the yarn store, pretty cool. They had more colors, which I tried to convince myself to get other colors, but then I came back to the green yarn because again, it's green, it's green. This one was also pretty cool. And then I also saw this one, which um, now I'm looking at it. I don't know why I didn't buy it because that this yarn is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. But of course I ended up getting green yarn. But then when I was at the counter, I kind of felt bad that I was getting more green yarn. So then I got blue yarn. So, you know, not all my clothes are green. I had, you know, a green something and a blue something. And then after that, I, I did my errands, but um, we don't care about that. So yesterday, I forgot my stitch markers on my mini road trip. So I couldn't knit at all in the car because I was working on the sleeve and I needed stitch markers for that. But I did get some exciting things. I got this yarn and I also got this yarn. Another thing I got. <laughs> I got this really amazing jacket that makes me look like I'm wrapped in a blanket. It was on sale and I ordered it and it arrived and here it is. Oh gosh, it's so amazing. I ended up working on my sleeve late last night, ta -da! and I made good progress. And then this morning I woke up at 5 a.m. to start working on it again, and I didn't make good progress because I, I messed it up. I didn't read the instructions, right? So I need to take apart half of this sleeve. Okay, now it's time for the really cool time lapse of me taking apart half of my sleeve. I don't think that made sense. <laughs> So luckily, the mohair did not get tangled. I didn't have to like restart my work. We're all good. So now I'm going to do the instructions correctly this time. And hopefully I don't mess up anymore because mohair is not fun to untangle. I have made great progress with my sleeve. Look at her. She is beautiful. She's actually a nice puff sleeve and not what she was before because before, <laughs> It was decreasing like every third stitch. So it was a beautiful puff sleeve. And then it went directly to this skinny part. I've been up since five o'clock. It is only 12.30. So I still have a full day of knitting. It's honestly crazy how much you can get done once you wake up at five o'clock in the morning. I understand those people that wake up at five o'clock in the morning now. Not saying I want to do it every day, but I understand. Ta-da! <laughs> I'm, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. I'm almost done my one sleeve here. And you can see it's slightly short on me. It's not completely done. I'm going to fix it a little bit, but I'm kind of regretting not trying it on before I started the ribbing here because then I could have you know, extended it a bit. But I think I'm just gonna add a couple more inches of ribbing at the end here. And then, you know, should be the perfect length. And after that, this video kind of takes uh, you know, a turn. I don't, yeah, I guess not for the better. Turn for the worse because this is when I started to get real sick. I got sick. Yeah, not great. Which knitting's a pretty good thing to do when you're sick, but it's, yeah, it just takes a little bit longer because it's harder because you have to take more breaks. And um, <laughs> I was definitely struggling through this. Does anybody else just like not like showering? Not just be. Okay, that sounded really bad. I don't really like showering. Like the act of showering. Not like, I like the, you know, the after the fact, how you, you know, you feel good, you feel clean, but yeah, I hate getting like all wet. So pretty much for the next few days, I just continued trying to finish the last sleeve and then also the straps of the sweater and definitely slow and steady kept a progress because I was blowing my nose every 30 seconds. So I ended up figuring out, you know, just put some tissue up your nose and then you'll be good to go and you don't have to take as many breaks. But yeah, still had to take breaks. Didn't shower though. Took a while to shower, especially, you know, when you're sick. It's the last thing you want to do is go stand in a shower. Maybe some people do, but yeah, me at least. I was like, the last, the last thing I want to do right now. And because I wasn't showering, obviously, you know, my hair, my body, because I was sick and because I wasn't showering, it started to get not as nice over those days. So I tried to just film my hands to save you guys from seeing that. Yeah, but eventually we made it to the moment where I showered. Good news, friends. I finally showered. 
<clears throat> so I have some questions to answer. One, is my sweater done? Well, yes it is. Two, do I like the color? No. Three, do I want to dye it a different color? No. Four, should I dye it another color? Yeah. Five, will I dye it another color? Yeah, I think I will. So now that that, so now that that, I have my dye pot with all of my dye here, which I don't know how well it's gonna work. And yes, this is very risky to dye something after you made it. You probably should dye the yarn first, then make something, but again, I like to do things backwards on this channel. It's got a lot of colors. So I'm thinking I want to do it in a blue color just because I feel like blue's harder to mess up. Pink, there's a lot of shades of pinks I don't like and I feel like most blues I would be happy with. So blue's the color. So the first step before I even mix my dyes is gotta take my sweater and put it in water. So if there's anything I've learned in my art journey with mixing colors, paints, dye, is you always want to add little and then work your way up. Don't add too much of anything because you can't really go back. So I think I got the blue color I'm, you know, I'm happy with. All I did was just put blue and a little bit of black in there. And I haven't really tested it on anything, so we're just going to have to wait to see how it looks. I'm really nervous. So for the dyeing process, and I know that sounds so strange. I don't know why they call it dye. Just so bad, but for this process, what you do is you take your pot, you put it on the stove, you heat it up until it simmers, you turn it off when it simmers, and then you put your yarn in, and then you mix it all around. You do the hokey, okay. You just mix it, and then you mix it, and keep mixing it, and then once it's cooled down, so you just leave it on the stove until it's pretty much almost cool, and then that is when it's done. That is when your fabric's good to go, or not fabric, technically it's yarn, but now that it's assured, I can, mm, still not fabric. Anyways, you wanna make sure the water runs clear, it is all rinse, and then you're gonna put it onto a towel. I'm just laying it all flat, make sure it's nice and pretty, and then you roll it up like a croissant. And then what you wanna do is step on the croissant. You wanna smash the, not really smash, but you wanna step on it a decent amount to get all the water out. Then you can unravel the croissant, put it onto a nice fresh towel, just so it dries faster, and I just let it lay there. Well, friends, I have some good news. I didn't ruin the sweater. She's one color. And she didn't shrink. Yes. Well, here she is. Here is the... Sweater? I don't know. I was trying to think of like a good name to call her, but no, it's just it's just a wrap top that's surprisingly really warm. <laughs> like the you know, the lady at the yarn store said, Ooh, that's gonna be a really warm sweater, and then I was like, No, it's not, because look, there's like it's like see-through, it's not like super opaque, like it's gonna be breezy, like they're just gonna flow through it. But now that I have it on, no, she was right. She she's it's, it's quite warm. It's yeah. It's, it's hot, so. Might be more of a fall piece to wear rather than a spring summer piece like I thought it was gonna be, but either way, I still love it. Hi, Benson. And she's even got the little bow at the back here. Like, look at her. <laughs> this is so cute. But she's honestly getting kind of warm, so I'm gonna go, cause yeah, it's warm. So yeah, I'm gonna go. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. If you guys wanna make this sweater, I'll have all the links down below of everything that I use, the pattern, it's all down there. So have a great rest of your day and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.